Greetings and welcome once again here on our Wednesday night. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. It's a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord one more time. It's a blessing to have you tune in to another Wednesday night that we can study the word of God together. We bless God for your presence on tonight. You that are watching live tonight, we thank God for you. Pray that you've had a blessed day, a blessed week already because we believe, amen, that God is up to something great and he's going to do something great in your life on tonight. We're going to get ready, amen, to bring our praise and worship to you in just a moment here. But we just want to encourage you tonight, amen, to invite somebody in, to let them know that we're alive right now for our Wednesday night Bible study, that you can come and tune in together with us, that we may hear what the word of the Lord has to say to us on tonight. And we thank God for those few that are here tonight in our Bible study and pray that they've had a blessed day as well. At this time, we're going to get ready to bring our praise and worship leader before we want you to join in with her on tonight. Sing at home, wherever you may be. If you're riding in your car, you can sing along with her. Amen. Even in your car, as she give God praise, honor, and glory. So thank God for our praise and worship leader tonight, Minister Deanna Williams. Amen. At this time. Praise the Lord. I mean, know that we serve a mighty God. Amen. We serve a mighty God, we serve a holy God, we serve an awesome God, my Savior, my Savior, we serve a mighty God, yes we serve a holy God, we serve an awesome God. My Savior, my Savior, we serve a mighty God. Yes, we serve a holy God. We serve an awesome God. My Savior, my Savior, we serve a mighty God. Yes, we serve a holy God. We serve an awesome God, my Savior, my Savior. You are the great I am. You are the King of Kings, a wonderful Counselor. You are. We serve the mighty God. Yes, we serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. My Savior, my Savior. Yeah. We serve a mighty God. And we serve a holy God. We serve a righteous God. My Savior. Savior, you are the great I am. You are the King of Kings, a wonderful Counselor. You are, you are mighty. You are holy. 
Righteous God, we serve a mighty God. As they continue to play softly, we're gonna go into a word of prayer, believing and trusting God for those that are out sick, those that need healing, those that need change of their bodies. We believe in God tonight that He's gonna meet them in that place of need because we serve a mighty God, we serve a righteous God, a holy God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can think or even imagine this time we're going to bow as father we say thank you now for this opportunity to come to you on tonight once again we bless you because you have been good to us you bless us to see a day that was not even promised to us but because of your grace and your mercy we stand here tonight god saying thank you thank you for your love thank you for your power god thank you god for another opportunity god just to be in your house oh god Thank you for life, health, and strength, oh God. Because somebody, God, this morning, God, did not make, but God, you've allowed us, oh God, to be here for such a time as this. We say thank you, God. Because we want to say thank you before we ask you for anything. But you say that you were doing everything, God, to give you thanks, to give you praise, to give you honor, to give you glory, God. And tonight, God, we pray, God, for the sick and the shed in on tonight, God. Pray for those that have lost loved ones, even on this day, oh God. We pray, God, for the healing. We pray for the change right now, God. Somebody, God, was called to come to be with you, oh God. Somebody's in sorrow, God. Somebody's in grief right now. And I pray for their healing. I pray for their touch right now, God. Let them know that you're present, help in the time of their troubles, oh God. Comfort their hearts and the minds of your people, God. Because we're losing people every day, God, through this pandemic, oh God. But we stand today, God, asking that you would heal, asking that you would move, asking that you would touch in a mighty way, oh God. And I pray, God, for any of our members, oh God, that are sick and shut in tonight, God. I speak healing over their bodies right now. I speak change in their bodies right now. Bless your people on tonight, God. That, God, they may rise up, God, and tell what you've done. Tell how you move and tell how you heal, oh God. Get into their ways right now, God. Touch and move and speak, oh God, in a special way, God. So I give you praise and honor and glory now. We even, God, pray for our cities right now, God. Our cities, oh God that are going through God. Our cities, oh God, that things are happening, God. People are being shot. People are being gunned down, God. I pray for the city of Rochester right now that you would heal our city, God. Bless those loved ones, oh God. Testament of special way, God, that lost their loved ones over the weekend, God. Bless and heal them now, God. Pray for every family right now that's been affected, God, by that shooting, oh God. So touch and a move in a great way, God that we will praise, honor, and glorify you. And we pray for our leaders of this city, oh God. We stand in the gap for their moment tonight, God. Give them direction, God. Give them wisdom and insight, God. Which way to move and how to move, oh God. We pray for our leaders right now because, God, you told us to pray for those in authority, God. And we hold all our leaders up before you on tonight, God. And our government touch their hearts and minds right now. Now we pray even for our leaders of the churches, oh God. Bless the men and women of God that speak and teach your word, God. I pray that, God, you would give them what to say in a time and season like this, oh God. Bless them to stand, God, behind the desk, God, and to live your word, that it may be timely and in season like this, in which we are living in, God. We give your name the praise, honor, and glory. We count it all done in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Go to a very familiar passage, which we'll probably be dealing with someone tonight. We're coming from James chapter 1, verse Number two, James 1 and 2. My brother, count all joy when you fall into Dawah's temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patient. But let patient have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any man like wisdom, let him ask of God, 
who give it to all men liberty and abide it not and it shall be given unto him but let him ask in faith not wavering for he that wavereth is like the waves of the sea driven with the winds and tossed and let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord a double minded man is unstable in all his ways may the Lord bless the hearers and the doers of his red word because tonight we'll be talking about a little bit of faith tonight tonight amen we must believe and trust what the word of God is telling us so the Bible says, trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways. If you acknowledge him, he will direct your path. At this time, we're going to bring our praise and worship leader back before you one more time, and she's going to sing, and we're going to come back with a spoken word for tonight. Amen. Get your pen and paper out, because there will be some scripture that we'll be giving you that you can follow along in our teaching on our praise and worship leader at this time.
lift your voice and cry out oh those hands right where you at come on oh. Romans 4, 17. Romans 4, 17. That is written to have made thee a father of many nations before him whom 
he believed, even God, who quickened the dead, called those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope? Who again hope, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he is able to perform. I want to read that last verse right there one more time. And being fully persuaded, fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Now, Father, we come before you now. Today I pray for your people as this spoken word comes today. Somebody's waiting on promise. Somebody was at the urge of giving up. But tonight, God, I pray that something we say would cause them to get back in the fight, cause them to hold on to know that, God, what you had spoken, it shall come to pass. Because you told us in your word, O oh God, be not weary in well-doing, because if we don't faint, God, it shall surely come to pass. And tonight, we believe you, we trust you, we thank you, that what we are believing and trust you for, it shall come to pass. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We bless the Lord tonight. Thank God for you that are here with us tonight here in the building. We praise God for the few that are here present tonight. And we thank God for you that are tuned in, amen, with our service on tonight. It's a blessing to have you once again in our Bible study on tonight. Amen. And we can come and hear what thus says the Lord in our Bible study on tonight. Tonight we want to stand before you briefly and talk about, amen, receiving God's promise. Receiving God's promise. We, last week we talked about God as a progressive God. And we want to continue, amen, to talk about receiving God's promise. And there are some things that you need to have to receive the promises of God. There's things that you need to have connected to you in order to walk in promise, to receive promise. Many of us want promise. Sometimes we don't have the right tools to walk in to receive the promises of God. As God is talking here, he's talking about Abraham. That Abraham is the father of faith. And that God made a promise to Abraham. Not only did he make the promise to Abraham, but he also made it to Abraham, the promise to Abraham's seed as well. And tonight, we are part of Abraham's seed. And tonight, I want to give you some basic things to help you to receive the promises of God. It don't have to be no Hebrew. It don't have to be no Greek. Because in times like this, amen, we need just the word of God that can cause us to walk into what God has promised in our life. And I know some of you have been waiting on some things. Some of you are trusting God for some things to come to pass in your life. And oftentimes we're in a battle to receive the promises of God. And when I learned that when God makes a promise or when God tells us that he's going to bless us, there's always a fight in the spirit that the enemy come to try to derail us from receiving the promises of God. But you got to realize tonight, you can't be derailed when you're trying to receive the promises of God. So there's some things I'm going to give you tonight that would help you to receive the promises of God. As he was talking to Abraham, he told Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. I'm going to bless your seed. And when the first thing he told Abraham he needed was faith. Faith is one of the first things 
that we need. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So the first thing to receive a promise, you got to have faith. And thank God that he said in this word, I have dealt every man a measure of faith. So you have faith, but you have to put your faith in action. All right? You have to put your faith in action because faith without works are dead. So it's not enough just to believe, but you also got to put some action behind what you're believing for. You got to begin to walk toward that promise in which God has showed you. So he told Abraham, he said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you, but you got to have faith. And say it was kind of him, kind of unto him as righteousness because he believed God, because he trusted God. So we've got to have faith in order to please God. And how do we get faith? One of the ways we get faith is through teaching and hearing the word of God. One of the ways we get faith is through the teaching and the hearing the word of God. So we got to hear the word of God. We got to receive the word of God. Because faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word. Faith must be taught. We got to teach people how to walk in faith. How to live in faith. Don't tell me to have faith, but teach me how to activate my faith. You got to learn how to activate your faith. You got to learn how to connect to God. So faith is, amen, teaching. Also, it's also reliance and trusting. So Abraham relied on God. He trusted in God. And what God would do? God would show you things along the way to build your confidence. As he told Abraham that Abraham, he would be the father of many nations, he began to walk Abraham through the process. So in this faith walk that you're on, it's a process that you're going to go through. There's a fight that you're going to be in. There's a test that you're going to have to go through. There's some endurance, amen, that you got to build up. Amen. You know, it's kind of like building up your immune system. It's like when you get sick, there are certain things you must take in order to build up your immune system. To keep it at the level that can keep your strength up. So God said, amen, you got to keep your immune system up. You got to resist some things. When the enemy comes to bring doubt, you got to speak faith. You got to tell him, I trust God. I believe God. I'm standing on the word of God. He said, resist the devil and he what? Shall flee from you. Now, this promise did not just start here in the book of Romans. If we go back, amen, to Genesis chapter number uh, 15, we'll begin to find where God started out with Abraham, telling Abraham what he was going to do. I know I didn't tell Pastor Schiller, amen, to get a mic tonight, but if someone can slide her a mic right quick, because I'm going to hit these verses, I'm going to move kind of swiftly here. I want to try to give you as many as I possibly can tonight. He said, in Genesis chapter number 15, starting at verse number 1, God now is telling Abraham about the promise. And one thing you got to understand, in order to receive from promise don't always come overnight. There are some stuff that was spoken in Abraham's life that took years to come. It took about 20 some years for Abraham to receive promise. And sometimes we get in a couple of years and we think promise ain't going to happen. Oh no, promise is on the way. Come on, you got to touch yourself. Say promise is still on the way. That's why you got to have faith. That's why I say fight the good fight of faith because it's going to be in a fight that you're in to believe God for your promise. So you're going to be in a fight to receive your promise. You're going to be in a battle with the enemy to receive your promise. So you got to know that you're in a fight. But the good thing about the fight, you always can win. Because God said, with every test and every trial, come on, I'll make a way for you to escape. I'll make a way for you to get out. I'll make a way for you to believe my word. He was trying to teach us how to walk by faith and not by our sight. You got to walk by faith today. Because everything that you see, amen, it's going to challenge your faith. I mean, some of the things you see is going to challenge your faith. You gotta, faith is the currency, amen, to your blessing. It carries some weight. So Genesis chapter 15, starting at verse number one, what did it say, Pastor Shiller? After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I 
am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Now watch what he says. I am your shield. I am your covering. I'm the thing that's going to cover you on this faith walk. Isn't it good to know that God said, I'm going to be your shield. I'm going to block those things that come to try to tear you down. I'm going to be your shield. I'm going to block some stuff. That's why I say, take the shield of faith. God said, I'm going to be your shield. I'm going to cover you in this walk of faith to receive the promise that I promise you. And every day that you get up, God is walking with you to receive your promise. Ain't it good to know that God is walking with you to receive your promise? He said, I'm going to be your shield and your exceeding what? And thy exceedingly great reward. Your exceedingly great reward. He said, I'm going to be your shield, but I'm going to be your great reward. Because you trust me, you stood on my word. He said, I'm going to be your great reward. So when you trust God, there's a reward that comes along with it. When you have faith in God, there's a reward that's coming with it. Come on, amen. There's a blessing that's coming along with it. And he's telling Abraham, he said, Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to be your shield, and I'm going to be your reward. Now watch this. And Abram said, Lord God, what will thou give me? Seeing I go childless, and thy steward and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. Yes, yes. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Now, he would, he would, God's not having a dialogue. He's trying to, and then God, now God said, Now, I, I'm going to bless you. Now, he's telling me, Well, God, I don't know how you're going to do this. You ever, you ever told God, when God said he's going to bless you, you already, well, God, I don't know how you're going to do this. It ain't for you to figure out. It's for you to receive the promise. Come on, amen. It's not for you to figure out. It's simply to receive the word. It's to rely on the word of God. It's to trust what the word has been spoken over you. Come on, you got to learn how to trust the word. You got to trust what God has said. That's why the children of Israel got in trouble. Because God said, I showed you signs. I showed you wonders on the way. I showed you things that I can do. And you still did not trust me. Still didn't rely on me. Still didn't stand. So we got to have faith. We got to rely on God. We got to trust in God. Watch this. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, uh -huh. Uh -huh. This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, uh -huh. Look now toward heaven. Look, look. Uh -huh. And tell the stars. If thou be able to number them, and he said unto him, uh -huh. Uh -huh. So shall thy seed be. Now he said, Now look unto the star. God is setting up the promise. God is setting up the reward. He said, Now this is what I'm doing. He calls Abraham. He said, Come and look, look, see. He said, Look at the stars. Tell me what you can you number? He said, No. He said, That's how great your reward is going to be. That's how I'm going to bless you. But you got to understand. Amen. It's going to be a challenge to get to the blessing. It's going to be a fight to get to the promise. But he's telling him, he said, I'm going to be your reward. I'm going to be your protector. But I'm going to bless you. So he's telling him, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. So I got to have faith. I got to rely on God. I got to trust in God. And the next thing, I got to be obedient unto God. All right? I got to be obedient to God. I can't, you know, I look for the promise and look for the blessing and not obey what God has told me to do. He said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. So Abraham had not, was following this. He said, now come out and look. He came, he became obedient, following the instructions of God. So in order for me to receive the promise, I got to be obedient to the word of God. I got to have faith, I got to trust it, and I got to rely on it. Got to rely on it. In verse, I mean, in chapter number 15, I mean, Pray for me. Chapter number 17. Watch what uh, 17. We're going to move here right quick. 17. Let's go to 17 in one. Because this is now God has made the promise of God. But watch him and Abraham is still going to have some kind of dialogue here. 17 and 15. Genesis 17 and 15. Reads. And God said unto Abraham. You got it? And God said unto Abraham. As for Sarah, thy wife. 
Thou shalt no longer call her what? Sarah. I mean, I sh her name should be called Sarah. No more Sarah. 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 <laughs> All right. Read that again. Okay, 17 and 15? Yes. 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 Okay. And God said unto Abraham, uh -huh. as for Sarah, thou, thy wife, thou shalt not call her Sarah, but, call her but what? Sarah shall her name be. Because why? Because he, he said, now I'm changing her name, which means princess. Sarah means princess. He said, now this is going to be the princess. But there's a princess that got to be a king. So he said, her name shall be Sarah, which simply means princess. He said, I'm going to change her name because I'm about to multiply her seed. But watch what happens here. Watch this. And I will bless her uh -huh. and give thee a son also of her. Yeah, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Come on. Kings of people shall be of her. So he's saying, there's something coming out of you. And when God makes a promise to you, he's trying to bring something out of you. God said, I'm not just blessing you for yourself. But when I bless you, see, there's something I'm trying to pull out of you to be a blessing to everybody else. Come on, amen, someone. That's why you're in the fight that you're in. Because the enemy realized there's a seed on the inside of you that God wants to bless beyond where you are. That's why your fight is so great. That's why your belief is being challenged. Because he understands there's a seed on the inside of you that God want to bring forth to be a blessing to the earth. Amen. Because I'm part of Abraham, y'all. And anything that comes from Abraham, amen, he said, amen, it's going to multiply the earth. Amen. He said, anything that comes from Abraham, it's going to help multiply the earth. He told Abraham, he said, look at the star. Can you number the star? Abraham said, I can't number them. He said, that's how blessed your seed going to be. And since I'm part of the seed of Abraham, I'm going to be blessed just like that, y'all. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? But he had to obey what the word of God said. He had to believe it. He had to trust it. And he had to rely on it. So he obeyed the word of God. He trusted the word of God. And not only that, I must have confidence in the word that was spoken. Do anybody have the confidence in the word that was spoken over you? You got to have confidence in the word that was spoken over you. Don't allow Satan to come, amen, and steal your confidence. Come on, don't come and allow him to steal your promise. You got to have the confidence. What God has said, he's able to perform. I got confidence that he's able to do it. Confidence is simply, I believe it. Confidence, amen, I've seen him work before. Confidence, I've seen him turn some things around. When I've seen how he brought the children of Israel, amen, out of Egypt, I got the confidence that he's more than a conqueror. When I've seen how he opened the Red Sea, I got more Come on, amen, somebody. I got confidence. I got confidence. When the children of Israel got hungry, they began to complain in the land, and God rained down manna from on high. I got confidence. When God, amen, came and he said, amen, the, the children were hungry in the New Testament, and he said, sit down, sit them down in groups of 50, and he began to say, who got some lunch? And he called a little lad with two loaves and five, amen, uh, with five, two loaves and five fish. And he fed the multitude. Off of, off of lunch. Don't you know that Don't God can feed the multitude off your lunch? Off your lunch, your lunch, your lunch. But you got to have the confidence. Do anybody have confidence tonight? I got confidence. It's not enough to have confidence, but I got to remain steadfast. You need to put that up. Tell your neighbor, remain steadfast. You got to remain steadfast. You can't let nothing come and shake you, amen, from off your course. You got to remain steadfast. That's why the word of God said, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the words of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. You got to remain steadfast. You can't let stuff come along and cause you, amen, to not to be steadfast. No, you got to remain confident in what you, God has told you he's going to do for you. Remain steadfast. Remain unmovable. Remain unchanged. I'm going to remain here until God do it. I'm going to keep speaking until it come to pass. Come on. You got to keep speaking it. 
Speak it over your own life. Speak it over your own condition. Remain steadfast. Come on, tell him again. Remain steadfast. Keep speaking it. Keep saying it. Remain steadfast. I don't care what come and who go. You remain steadfast. Because what the enemy would do, he was sending people to move you out of place of promise. He would send things along the way to make you doubt the promise. But I got to remain steadfast. Because he told me, he said, remain steadfast, unmovable. You can't move. You got to rely on the word of God. So he's telling Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I got you covered, Abraham. Now watch this. Him and Abraham still talking. Now watch what he says here. What else? Then Abraham fell upon his face. And what? And laughed. Oh. And said in his heart, uh -huh. shall a child be born unto him that is in old, in hundred years old? You mean to tell me something like a hundred years old going to birth something? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? He said, wait a minute, God, you playing now. He said, God, I'm a hundred. Sarah, he said, listen, we passed childbearing years. He said, we passed that. He said, uh-uh, you, 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 you can't be talking to me, God. So he fell down and he laughed. Watch what happened. I'm going to take you back to the scripture in just a minute here in Romans. Come on. And Abraham said unto God, uh -huh. Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Yes. And yes. God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. So, so, so what Abraham, so what, seed after him. so what Abraham do, he tried to look beyond what God was telling him. He said, well, you know, we got this other seed. That's what God said. That's not what I'm talking about. Stop trying to make excuses for the promise that he spoke over you. Say it again. Stop making excuses for the promise that he spoke over you. Because when the promise don't come in the time in which we think it all the time, we make excuses for why we ain't got it. Ah, well, you know, well, maybe he, maybe he really didn't say that. Maybe God didn't mean it like that. What God said, he's able to perform. If it's dead, he's able to wake it up. Come on, he met someone. So Abraham said, well, it must be going. No, he said, no, it's coming through Sarah, the one that's old. <laughs> he said, that's who it's coming through. Next thing you got to do, I'm going to go back to Romans and just, and we're going to give it to go to Romans. Go back to Romans here, Amen, chapter 4. I'm going to, but write this down. You must embrace the word that was spoken. Come on, say embrace the word. Because when you embrace it, I mean, Amen, you're taking it to heart. I got to embrace the word, brother Josh. Minister Josh, I got to embrace it. Because if I don't embrace it, Amen, I may not believe it. But I got to embrace that word. Come on, tell them again, embrace it. You got to embrace the word of God. You got to take it to heart. If God spoke it, that settles it. If God said it can be done, it can be done. If God said it can come to pass, it can come. But I got to embrace that word. Tell it, tell, come on, say it again, embrace. You got to embrace that word. You got to take that word to heart. And I'm proving point. So when he's talking in Romans here, Go back to Romans, amen. Start at verse number 18, Pastor Schiller. Start at Romans 4 and 18. Yeah, 4 and 18. We're going to close out. Who against hope believed in hope? So he, who against hope believed in hope? So he said, at one point I didn't have hope, but I believed in hope. That he might become the father of many nations. Come on. Come on. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. So I get, see, so that was spoken. The word that was spoken. Come on. He embraced it. When Abraham fully embraced what God said, God was already working this thing out. He believed it. He embraced it. He received it. Even though he laughed, even though at one point he said, well, I don't know God, but he turned around and embraced that word that was spoken over him. He embraced what God said. He received what God said. He trusted what God said. What else? And being not weak in faith, uh -huh. he considered not his own body 
now dead. It's dead. It's dead. It's dead. When he was about a hundred years old, come on, come on, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God to said, unbelief. So he he didn't stagger. But was strong in faith, giving glory Where, to God. He, watch it, watch it. He he was strong in faith and what giving glory. So you got to be strong in faith and then give some glory. Come on, be strong in faith and give Him glory. Come on, y'all. Tell them again. Say, be strong and give glory. So that simply means celebrate what God is getting ready to do. Come on. Abraham was celebrating what God was getting. He said, amen. He, he embraced it. Come on. He received it. He celebrated what God was getting ready to do. Because he said, Sarah's womb was dead and I'm dead too. Ain't nothing swimming around. My seed is dead. My seed is done. Amen. He said, ain't nothing coming through here. Amen. But he, he said, I'm dead. Sarah dead. And he's like, oh, Lord, how you going to do this? But he said, he celebrated. He gave God glory because he believed in what God had said. He staggered not. He didn't quit. He didn't give up. He didn't lose sight. He didn't lose hope. He didn't lose trust. He didn't stagger at the promise of God, but he believed the word of God. You can't stagger. You got to believe it. You got to trust it. You got to embrace it. You got to depend upon it. So he staggered not at God's promise because he knew that God was able to do it exceedingly, abundantly, above all he thought or even imagined. He knew God could do it. He knew God could make a way. He knew God, amen, can bring life to a dead place. And God said, I'm trying to bring some life back to somebody, amen. I'm trying to let you know your promise is not dead. And if your promise is dead, I know how to resurrect it. God know how to resurrect your promise. God know how to resurrect what's been dead in you. God know how, amen, to speak a word into your life and bring that zeal back, to bring that passion back. Bring that power back. Bring that anointing back. So he staggered not at the promise of God, but gave him glory. Gave him glory. Sometimes you got to shout before the promise comes. Come on, touch yourself. Say shout before the promise comes. Celebrate before the promise comes. Raise your hand before the promise comes. Don't wait till they score the touchdown. Do your dance already. Come on. Come on. Sometimes we wait for them to score a touchdown. He said, you ain't got to wait for this one. He said, let's get the ball and spike it in the end zone. Because celebration is getting ready to happen. Amen, somebody. Oh, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on, tell them celebrate. Come on, you got to do your dance already. Amen. You got to shout like it's already done. Amen. You got to give him glory like it's already done. You got to give him glory like it's already come to pass. Come on, you got to put a praise on it like it's already done. Put a praise on it. He said he gave him glory, y'all. He shouted about it. He gave God praise because he believed in the promise of God. He believed that God was able to do it exceedingly what he was asking to do. And being fully what? Persuaded. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Perform. Anybody persuaded tonight? Anybody persuaded for your promise? I'm persuaded. I believe it. I trust it. I stand on it. I'm persuaded that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. That every door that need to be open, it will be open. He said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open. Anybody believe it tonight? I believe God tonight. He said he staggered not at his promise. But being fully Persuaded. You got to be fully persuaded in this walk. You got to be fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. Anybody fully persuaded? I'm fully persuaded that what God promised Deacon Eagle, he's able to perform. I'm fully persuaded that he can pay off this ministry. Come on, I'm fully persuaded. I'm fully persuaded that souls will be saved even in this pandemic. Lives will be changed. People will be healed. People will be delivered. I'm fully persuaded. I'm 
fully persuaded. I'm convinced of it. I've seen God operate. I've seen God, amen, raise people up. I've seen people that came that could not walk. God healed their body. I've seen people had cancer and cancer is gone. Come on, anybody fully persuaded tonight? I'm fully persuaded that whatever he said, he's able to perform. Because I believe it. I trust it. I remain steadfast. I remain unmovable in the works of the Lord. Because I know that my labor, woo, my praise is not in vain. My thank you is not in vain. My giving is not in vain. My hallelujah is not in vain. My wave is not in vain. Because I am fully persuaded that he is able to perform what he said he would do. I'm fully persuaded. I'm fully convinced that he can do it. I'm convinced of it, y'all. He said he called those things that be not as though they were or though they are. And sometimes you got to call some things into existence. I told you there's power in your words. Come on, there's power in your words. You got to call some stuff forth. Because sometimes stuff is kind of lagging behind. You know, it's like some, when, when, uh, uh, when, when, my, when my kids were small and, you know, me and co-pastor would, would take them somewhere and let, they would just kind of lag behind. You know, they'd kind of, I said, get yourself up here. <laughs> I want them to catch up. And sometimes you got to call your blessing so your blessing can catch up with it. Come on, you got to call it forth sometimes. Come on, touch that and say, call it forth. You got to call your blessing sometimes. Come on here. You've been lagging long enough. I need this thing right now. I tell them, come on here. And they come running like, look. <laughs> and then what? And now once they get there, I latch and grab the hand because I want to keep the flow, y'all. Come on, amen. Come on, you got to hold on to it and keep the flow. When you see your blessing come, when you see your miracle come, grab hold to it. One minute. I got one minute, y'all. Amen. Anybody persuaded tonight? Anybody believing tonight? Anybody, uh, am I building anybody faith tonight? Am I building anybody confidence tonight? Do anybody believe they're going to get promised tonight? Hey, man, God is able. I see Brother Kevin on back there. They're waving a the hand. They say they believe. They say they trust him. Amen. Him and Sister Bob got the both hands raised right there. They believe God. They trust in God. They're standing on God's promises. Because I'm fully persuaded. What he said he can do, he can do it. I'm fully persuaded that it's going to come to pass. So I want to encourage somebody tonight. Don't give up on your promise. It took Abraham 20 some years for a promise to come. I believe it was through uh, uh, his, uh, the, the promise of his seed. He had eyes and he had Israel. No, no. God said, uh-uh. I got to give you the real promise. I got to give you the real promise. Stop trying to substitute other things for what God promised you. Stop selling it. Abraham, had a, Abraham and Sarah were trying to sell this way. It must be going to come through. No, God said, it's coming through y'all. It's going to come through you. The blessing is going to come through you. The blessing is going to come through you. Because, amen, God blessing you to be a blessing to your family. That's why he blessing you. That's why the fight is so great. Because you, 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 you're the blessing that God want to bless to bless them. Don't let people talk you out your blessing. Don't let people move you out of your, out, out, out of your position. Because people will try to move you. Well, you know, ain't all that now. Well, that's all right. I don't waited this long. I'm going to keep waiting. You know, that's a COVID. You know, this morning, I, I went to have some, you know, I went to have some blood work done and for them to draw my blood because, you know, I got to go to the doctor next week to have a checkup. And when I went there and I'm waiting and I sat down and the woman say, well, we, we don't see, we don't see nothing in here for you that say you're supposed to um, have no blood work done. I said, yeah, they told me now. She said, well, I don't see your name on here. She said, well, you think the doc doctor's open by now? I said, it should be open. So she called and they checking the records and no, we don't have no record of him and you know, you know, and, so, and so they said, well, what we'll do, we'll fax it over. So I said, all right, they're going to fax it over. 
So the woman said, well, you got to go back outside and wait, you know, call, you know, the cold, the cold again. Then they had a little emergency going on. And so, so the woman said, go back out there and wait, and we'll call you back in when your paperwork come. So I'm out there waiting, and I'm waiting, and every time they come out, and the woman said, no, we don't see your paperwork yet. It ain't came yet. And so she said, well, if some of y'all need to leave, you can leave. So, you know, leaving, leaving hit my mind now. Shoot, I'm tired of waiting. I've been waiting long enough. This stuff ain't coming. Don't tell how long going to take them to send my paperwork. So she said, yeah, you know, it ain't coming. I ain't got here yet. And um, so um, I said, all right, I'm going to get them one more. I'm going to get them one more try. Get them one more chance. So woman, she goes back. She calls another person in there. And then she comes out, the other, out lady, the other lady, and she calling she another, called woman another woman to come in. I said, what in the world? And just as the door was about to close, God, just as the door was about to close, the other lady said, oh, we got your paperwork. Sometimes you got to wait it out. They that wait on the Lord. Come on, amen. Now I almost left. But just a but few just more seconds, seconds, I was able to get my paperwork in and get my blood work done. Come on, sometimes we just got to be a little more patient. Hey Amen. Because it's already my mind. I said, shoot, I, ain't, I don't feel like coming back. Oh, man, I got to come back. And I got all that in my mind, all that's going on in my mind. Come back later. I said, I don't know. I, you know what? I'm just going to go to the doctor and tell them they ain't getting any time enough. You know what happened? She said, it expired. She said, she said, when you were supposed to come, supposed to come you, didn't come. you didn't come. It expired. It expired. So they had to send over a new order. Even though it expired, God brought it back to life. That's all I'm trying to tell you. Because what God has for you lives for you. Don't give up on your promise. Don't give up on what's about to hit your life. I don't know who I'm talking to even in this audience tonight. Or even by live stream tonight. I hear the Lord say, don't give up on my promise. What I have promised, I'm able to perform. Don't give up tonight. Trust. Believe. Remain steadfast. Embrace it. Hold on to it. It shall come to pass. It's going to be a blessing to you. And not only will it be a blessing to you, but you're going to be a seed that will be a blessing to others in generations to come. That's simply what it's all about. Abraham was the seed that would cause other seeds to be blessed. And you are the seed that's going to cause people to be blessed in your family, through your lineage. If you believe, if you trust, come on. If you embrace it, come on, amen. It's going to come to pass. We're going to get ready to pray. Father, thank you for this spoken word tonight. I believe your promise. I believe what you told me. I believe what you said to me. And tonight, God, I speak to that young man and young woman that was at the point of giving up, on the point, God, of throwing in the towel, at the point thinking that it wasn't going to come to pass because of the time in which we're living. Tonight, I speak to them and tell them to rise back up, to stand strong, to stagger not, to be fully persuaded that what you have promised you are able to perform. And I thank you for what you're going to perform in their life right now. For what you're about to do. For what you're about to release in the lives of your people right now. Because somebody trusts you. Somebody believes you. Somebody standing on your promise right now. And I pray God, I hear you saying, within the next month, some promises going to come to pass. Some things are, about being, are being released right now. Some things are being worked out even before this month is over. Somebody, some people going to receive some promises. They're going to walk in some blessings. I know we got a few days left in this month, but I hear you. I hear it. You're going to release it. You're going to bless them. It's going to come to pass. You're going to show them that you are God, and beside you there is no other. So I thank you for the blessing. I thank you for the release right now, for the healing of those that need to be healed. For those that need more income. For those that are looking for that home. For those that are looking for family members to be saved. Thank you for saving them right now. Thank you for delivering them right now. 
We count it all done. In your precious name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We pray that the word has blessed you on tonight. We pray that something we said has spoke to your heart to make you grab hold to the promise of God, to make you grab hold to faith. Know that what God has promised, he is able to perform. And know that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. You're going to make it. You're going to be great. You're going to be awesome because God is on your side because you're trusting his word. We want to invite you to give tonight as well. If you want to sow a seed into our ministry, go to our Giveify, our Cash App, and you can sow into our ministry. We thank you for every seed that you sow into this house. Your seed help us do ministry. Your seed help us to reach the lost. Your seed help us, amen, to keep these lights on, to pay our bills. We thank you for all that you do for every seed that you sow. And every seed that you sow is a harvest that's being prepared for you. We want to invite you back, amen. Also, go to our Facebook, go to our YouTube uh, channel. Also, go to our, our uh, website, agacook.com, agacook.com. Amen. And you can see the latest thing that we're doing here in the city of Rochester, New York. Amen. So you, those are other ways you can kind of keep up with us. But I want to invite you back to be with us on Sunday morning for our Sunday school. We will also be doing a live stream of our Sunday school. Because we want to invite you, amen, that you can hear the word of God being taught. Amen. Because we still need to be taught the word of God. Amen. I think Sunday school is one of the most powerful tools that we can use to also help reach people. So tune into our Sunday school at 10 a.m. Sunday mornings, amen, and we, we'll have that on our website and different places you can go and find us as well. So tune in Sunday morning at 10 a.m., and then we'll be at our 11.30 service on Sunday morning. Join in with us at our 11.30 service on Sunday morning as well. We love you. We thank you for being a, a part of our service tonight. May God continue to bless you, keep you. I'm Pastor Nolan, along with Pastor Sheila, here in the wonderful city of Rochester, New York. We're praying for you as you pray for us. We look to see you on Sunday. God bless you.